But that freaking little man, it was like eight feet tall. He was like, what's the problem? I'm like, what's the problem? The problem is the load is eight feet tall. I'm not, I don't really carry anything on six feet, six, six and higher, you know, if I don't have to. And yes, you see my trailer's dropped because like I told you guys and been telling you guys I mean my blower motor. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It went out of the truck Only reason I know that my defrost weren't really working anymore uh, The last couple days and my heat went out and my AC everything's just all over the place place and I'm getting a fan circuit code onto my uh, My tuner so that actually may be related um, Nothing's actually you know kind of working right so I'm gonna run up the auto zone They got one and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know go ahead and install that in the truck and this is the type of stuff I do on my 30 prior reset. I try to take care of everything, you know what I'm saying, that I need to do um, before I hit the road on Monday. You know, that way, I'm, you know, I'm not leaking on nothing. We aired up, everything's good. And uh, I went grocery shopping for the week already on my drive all the way here. Um, I fixed a little oil leak that I had on the truck. You know, I just need to tighten that little thing down. And uh, shoot, that's pretty much all there is to it. The truck's a little bit dirty, you know, but we did just get it washed a couple days ago. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about it. The outside's clean, you know, I probably could, you know, wipe the wheels down or something like that. You know, who knows? But I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish up this blow motor situation before the sun goes down. You know, that way I can enjoy, you know, um, shoot, enjoy my rest day. Enjoy my run, one rest day of the week. All right, YouTube, so we finally made it from AutoZone. Check part right here. Also need to clean that. I'm doing that as well, because that is definitely due for a clean and a re-oil. But yeah, we got the part right now, man. Went to the auto zone. It was only three miles up the street. I always try to park, you know, near a decent truck stop that probably has a bunch of stuff on the 34 and near an auto zone, just in case when you park, you catch something um, that you need to go ahead and take care of. But this is the new baby, and that is an easy install that I'm going to be putting. Sorry, the motor is dirty. It needs to be wiped down. It's been about a week, heavy driving. It's gonna be going right here. So I pretty much am gonna have to, really in order to get it out, I'm probably gonna have to undo, yeah, this bracket here from what I was seeing and then uh, let that drop down and then go ahead and then undo the bolts, the three bolts here, pop it out, you know, well, unplug this, unplug the hose, pop it out and then put the new one in. Boom, done. But anyway, let's go ahead and get to it. got the old one out check it out this is the old baby finally got that joker out and i know y'all get it that's the box that it came in and that's the new baby it's a little different uh not really the same size but i hope it fits and i hope the holes at least the part where it mounts looks exactly the same it's just this part the motor itself it looked like it's you know a little different but anyway i uh, thought there is to it man i really hope this works and uh we can go ahead and Shoot, have some AC, have some heat, and have some defrost, and stop smelling that darn burning noise, you know, that I was smelling, uh, you know, driving. But anyway, uh, hot shot me out, man. Y'all stay tuned for the rest.
All right, YouTube, we finally got the blow motor in. It took me about 30 minutes. That's the new baby in right there. I put some electrical tape, you know, on the tail end of that pigtail just because it was exposed. I don't really want anything gr or grime getting in there, kind of messing up this this thing. It, I do have a warranty on it, lifetime warranty, so that is good. But it's all snug up in there, man. It's probably put in better than it was, you know, before. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I guess let's crank her up, man, and see if your boy got any type of skills to... And this is the old one. Now, let's see what she do, man. I pray to God that this actually works out for the boy. Because, I mean, I've just been without heat, without AC, without defrost, all types of stuff, man. It's absolutely been crazy. So, you know, get in here, crank her up, see how the defrost blows, see how all that stuff happens. And hopefully, this $100 is not a waste of money because the boy don't got time to be wasting money. Let's roll up the windows. Make sure everything's good. We have re we, did, we just reconnected the batteries on everything. And uh, what did it do? All right. Let's put on this AC. Oh, it's not even on. AC. I got nothing. Oh, we got AC. Have AC, it worked. <laughs> I'm so excited. That don't want blowing at all. And we're gonna put it all the way down at 60 degrees. Full blast and that jump works, bro. Like, but no, your boy's been in the heat. Sorry for the glare. Everything. Oh my God, it's so nice to have freaking AC. Y'all can hear it. The junk is blowing full blast. Your boy needed this, man. But now we gotta test the defrost. The defrost is blowing in like 100%, 100% defrost right now. Dude, man, everything is working. Now we gotta test the heat. Make sure that's working. Let's see, let's turn it off. Auto, heat. How do I, oh, I'm so excited. I'm forgetting what I'm doing, man. I don't wanna flick y'all off. Let's go, up to, let's go up to 90 degrees real quick. Turn everything on. I can do it here, I'm tripping. Now the heat is blowing hot. Yes, with on the automatic. Let me see. The only thing that's still wrong is like, my blow motor only worked at like super high. Like the, the little bitty notches that you guys see down here, like none of them work except for just high. It's just high all the time. So that may be in a resistor issue, maybe, I don't know. I really don't know. But we are gonna turn this AC back on, I know that. And then get this temp all the way down. Let's see how quickly it changes for your boy. We going down to 60. And yeah, man, we seem to be in there finally, cold air, man. Praise God, bro, because your boy is tired of being in the heat. Really is. So now, to celebrate, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, get me a shower, change out these clothes, put some freshies on, get organized, clean up this mess that I got outside, throw away the old blower motor, and um, look up why the actual, like, the little lines, you know, to control the how much it gives isn't working. But I got to figure that out. Um, but at least the blower motor did work. I'm super excited about it because I'm tired of not having AC. I mean, tired of not having AC, heat, and with me not having that defrost that morning, like two mornings ago when it was super cold, that was just not it. It was working, but it took so long for it to, for my windows to defrost. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, the uh, good news is I had crunk up super early that morning. So, about an hour and a half later, at my my windshield was just barely enough good, you know, where I could start, you know, wiping down the moisture. But anyway, and that's probably just due to the heat of the motor. You know what I mean? Probably just because the defrost was completely off. Anyway, let me go ahead and get the shower, finish up. You know, uh, I think I, I don't know if I'm gonna get it working right now or get a workout in in the morning. I got nothing to do tomorrow, so I'll probably just say the workout in for tomorrow. I'm, I'm gonna just finish some, some paperwork once I get back in the truck. And shoot, man, we're gonna prepare for our week, man. Gotta get my rest in, gotta get the Sabbath in. You already know what it is, you already know the vibes. But anyway, I shout me out, man. Y'all stay tuned, stay blessed. Peace.
right, what's going on YouTube? We have made it to our third. Our third pickup, I didn't show you the second one because I was kind of in a rush, but we did pick up and drop off a second load um, with this, you know, with these, uh, what, are they, what, you what do you call them? These trailers. So now we're gonna pick up the third one and uh, drop it off along the way, all going to Georgia. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check in and see what they got for your boy. Can't even close the door, look at me. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. It's something called a grappler. It's going to um, It's literally like this round thing. And um, hopefully it doesn't have me bouncing around too much, man. 500 pounds, all those together, all those uh, trailers together is probably about 5,000 pounds. So it should even out pretty well. But once I get those forklift things off, it's going to be a little tough. It might be a little tough ride, you know what I'm saying? With that basically an anchor, a giant 7,500 pound anchor, you know, in the rear of the trailer. So I'm going to try to get them put as close as possible. But and it's gonna be a little, it's gonna be an interesting ride from Columbus, Georgia to Cartersville, Georgia, headed home. But anyway, man, y'all stay tuned, man. There she is, right there, sitting there waiting on me. Not too tall, ugly, but not too tall. Stuff like that, because I'm, I'm thinking that they're gonna prop it up on that wood post they have. Uh, you'll see when we get up close, but. If they prop it up there, they, I, I don't really want them to prop it up on that wood post, you know, like on my uh, trailer because that's going to be so much bouncing around back there. I don't know. It's too skinny. It's real, real too skinny. Got to be particular, man. And let me, while we out here, man, let me show y'all this. I'm going to be honest. If there's any loads you should stay away from, it is these. Reasons because of a lot of different reasons. Look how they stack this. This wood, I mean, if it's not secured right and got straps in all the right places, all this stuff could bounce around. All this wood could shift. All oh, that wood could shift. Look at the U bolts on that one. They're buried down in there. But on the other side, they're not. Come check it out. On the other side, they're not at all. Which is absolutely like, I mean, I mean, not that they're not buried inside, but they're buried inside, but they got everything at an angle. The structure of this is not like completely in line with the U-bolts, which is extremely sketchy. I mean, look at the bend in that, man. I'm gonna zoom out. That bend is crazy. Like, it's the same thing with the other one. Hold on. The bend is crazy. It's ridiculous. And then they got this stuff sent on sap of tires. I did not put this strap here originally because I had so many straps, I thought I was good, but then I forgot that I didn't have a strap, so it bounced a little bit. Luckily, it's like pretty much on the edge, but the trailer had bounced around. I'm gonna show you the other side. Walk around real quick. The trailer itself, I mean, it's technically like not in line. It's a little bit off, so it had bounced around on me and being on these tires, because I didn't have the strap right here, but caught it before it got too far off. Um, and we were able to, you know, secure it down and everything. But there's just so many variables in this. I mean, like, even the nail that they had put in, it literally is not nailed inside the main structure of this. But there's more nails and stuff, so I'm not worried about it. But it makes sure, even if, when they do stuff like this, if you guys ever come into a situation where they do do stuff like this, make sure they nail this wood and stuff down. Because when, if they don't, that wood will shift. I promise you that. I promise you that. And when you throw your straps, I'm gonna tell you from experience, and yes, I mean experience. Always strap over those darn fenders. They are not heavy duty. They will bend. Just a couple little pro tips from your boy. You know, we all out here trying to help each other through our, you know, mistakes and everything. And, um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get to see what they got for me. Like I said, we're gonna check it out actually. That's what I'm talking about, guys. This is that wood post I was saying. Like, if it's on the trailer, I don't really like that because, I mean, if it sits on the trailer just like this, in order for it not to bounce around too much, I probably will throw a strap, like, literally, like, on the wood itself if it sits just like that. Um, it looks like it's freshly painted. Got a little paint paint down there. Came on my finger, but, yeah, this is this big boy. This big bad boy right here. A little different. I'm happy it's not super, you know, it will sit like this. It shouldn't rock or anything if I secure it properly and everything. Um, probably throw a couple straps through the middle, you know, one on the top, one on the structure. If they put that wood piece there, they need to lift it up and then one, you know, back here somewhere. That's pretty much all there is to it, YouTube. Two chicken. 
because a lot of this weight is actually on this rear end right here, like right on the freaking axles like this, my gooseneck is basically, you see how that angles up like that? Everything is basically, you know, kind of being lifted up. You know, my whole, everything on the trailer's act because that's 75 and that's five. I'm gonna have majority of the weight back here. So when I drop this load, I'm gonna leave it where it is right now. But when I drop this load, I'm gonna take air out the bags. That way it decreases, it slopes us down a little bit more. And then hopefully, you know, release some pressure off this rear end. But I not feel like I'm carrying such an anchor um, going up to Cartersville because it is a little mountain that's going up that way. Good news is I don't have to try to new or Nashville or nothing like that. But um, that's pretty much what I'm gonna have to do. And uh, shoot, we'll go ahead and head home. But anyway, man, hot shot with me out. Let's get to this drive. I'm gonna wait on this paperwork. I'll take it easy. Stay blessed. Peace. Fix my head, man. I didn't tell me my hair was going crazy. Still is, but we can we, we going home, so you know we're gonna get the hair right. But anyway, um, the reason why I actually know that the trailer is even lifting up off the uh, is even lifting the truck up a little bit is because I put 95 psi last in the truck a couple days ago, and now come check where we sitting at. My digital gauge, I mean my this gauge right here that I have in the truck is not working. I gotta fix that. But normally it tells me the pressure on it. And I can do it automatically, but. All that stuff is freaking broke. Made my truck sitting in, uh, sit out the shop for so long. I think it's just something probably just froze over and I haven't been able to get to fixing yet. I don't even know why I'm talking, I'm walking towards the trailer, but uh, I'm gonna walk towards the truck right now. Like I said, on manual gauge right here. Put my little hair thing on here. We are at, freaking, freaking focus. We're at 75 right now, well 70, 75 right now. So that automatically tells me the truck is being lifted up. So I think for now, I think I'm gonna just leave it and see how the ride quality goes, maybe for like the first hour. And if I, you know, kind of feel that, you know, a lot of my weight is, you know, too much on the back, I'm gonna just take some of the air out of these bags. And um, especially when I get these trailers off, I'm definitely taking even more out. I'll probably take it down to 50, 40, 50, maybe PSI, something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to it, man. We're just waiting on this paperwork so we can go ahead and hit the road, man. Y'all stay tuned. back with another video actually it's probably loud let me get up let me get out out from behind the truck you know what i'm saying out behind the exhaust but uh we back on the road man your boy went home for literally probably about five days i needed the rest needed to see the kids spend the time just get warmer out had to get some situated things situated at the house but anyway that's beside the point we back on the road um and mind you last clip you guys saw i was on the road for probably about two and a half weeks we made some good money got through some hiccups um and, you know, like I said, when I got home, I ended up fixing, fixing a couple things on the truck that needed to be, you know, taken care of. Oh, and let me tell y'all this. <clears throat> Your boy got some new tires. Check it. So, shout out to the OG. Uh, for hooking your boy up with some tires from his old truck that he barely even used and uh, you know He gave me he gave me, you know slid them to me on a little on a little on a little situation You know what I'm saying? I love this kind of in that situation, but uh, we went ahead and threw the tires on right before I left because my BF good riches ran me probably about 120,000 miles. Yes, was 120,000 miles on some all-terrain BF good riches Rotate them every 10,000 miles up until probably like the last 30,000 miles. I just kind of let them run and do his thing, especially because like I didn't really have my truck. As you can see in the previous video, it was in the shop. And then once I got it back, I just had to make some money. You know what I mean? But we finally got them tires put on. We're going to rotate them every 10,000 miles and then we're going to see how long they last. We're going to see how long these all-terrains last uh, in comparison to the BF Good Riches. And also, my BF Good Riches were 285, 75 R17s. They were a bigger tire. I've been running that tire pretty much since I started hot shot. It's probably the beefiest tire you can get without any type of scrubbing on the stock wheels, you know, without any type of rubbing between the dual rear wheels. So these are the stock wheels, 245, 75, R17s. We went back stock, and I'm gonna tell you all right now, my MPG, I just save about $20 every time I fill up. You know what I mean? Well, on a light load. Like this is, a, I see this is partial number one. You know, running this all the way to Nebraska, partial number two. Well, now partial number one, I'm dropping it off in Oklahoma. And then partial number two, that's taking me all the way to Nebraska. And then we're going to, um, you know, try to find some, something along the way. But anyway, uh, we're going to see what these tires do. But I'm going to let you guys know the ride was smoother, absolutely smoother than the BF Good Riches. The BF Good Riches don't really have that much road noise, uh, thankfully. Because, you know, I do get a lot of people asking me about that tire. Hold on, it's a freaking truck. But, check it out. 
but I do I had to go to the other the clean the non so loud side but I do um know for a fact that the BF Grill Riches did not have any type of major road noise unless you don't get them rotated because my first set I didn't really rotate them like that and they ended up giving me a lot of road noise you know what I'm saying but keeping them rotated they last a long time rotated no problems with them I mean shout out to them that's a solid tire so these are um oh, let me see what actually type these tires are <laughs> right here are the Bridgestones I guess Dueler AT a little bit aggressive, not as aggressive as the Be of Good Riches. They definitely are smaller, like I said, so they sit a little bit in. Uh, I like the aggression. You know, I do like the field in white letters, you know, on the black wheels. You know, I don't really like white letters on chrome wheels or anything like that, but on black wheels, I mean, it set it off completely. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, we're going to see how these tires do. And uh, but I can already tell, man, my MPG already done went up with the smaller size. Um, it's, it's either that or in combination of I'm now using the Amsoil Diesel Injector Clean and Cetane Boost Additive instead of the Hot Shot Secret now. Um, so now that it's getting warmer out, I done swapped over to that instead of the all-in-one. Um, and then we're going to see. So I think that that may have something to do with it. But, you know, all in all, it's either the combination of both or mainly just these tires. But I'm really thinking it's just the tires going smaller in the size, comfortable ride. My turn radius is st was way freaking better. You know, it is just a 350. It's not a 450 or anything like that. But my turn radius is, you know, pretty much superb compared to what it used to be. I couldn't turn it all in my truck. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get to this road, get to this money, try to get some lows. Because once I drop out this first partial, and then I'm going to be looking for something to put on the front. Because <clears throat> this is about four, four or 5,000 pounds. And then this one right here is about um, 1,000, 1,600 pounds. It's on the front on the way to Nebraska, hopefully to make some more money off this. Um, but this does get us the, you know, the rate we need, you know, the profit, you know, going out that way. But anyway, let me go ahead and get to my drive. All right, YouTube, man, we made it to our first stop. This is what I was telling you guys. 626 miles, half a tank left with all the, well, you know, that's included all my tanks. So 626 miles at half a tank. Never do those numbers, ever. With the 285, 75s, R17s, and I normally, when I get hit half a tank, after going through all my tanks, at the very end, I'm normally at like five, five to 550 with a low and light load. You know what I'm saying? This load is low and light, and I'm, I almost went up 52, I'm gonna just say a range from 50 to 100 miles with smaller tires. What have I been doing? So I don't know if it's the maturity or what now, but I probably will never run nothing bigger than a stock tire when I am working and when I'm hot shotting. You know, eventually, you know, if I ever, you know, a personal truck situation, I'll run a bigger tire, you know what I'm saying, for show, sure, whatever the case may be. But in this vehicle, in a work truck, knowing I've been basically wasting money with the bigger tires, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. I just feel stupid. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, needless to say, man, we're going to go ahead and get this fuel. I'm happy about uh, the ride and everything. And uh, shoot, we're going to go ahead and get to it. And I did find another partial to pick up once I drop off this other partial, all headed towards, you know, Nebraska. So we good. You know what I mean? We definitely, we definitely uh, made some good money off this run. But I, like, I just did the calculations, probably like $2.70 a mile, something like that. And then we got to find some Friday headed back over towards the Missouri area because I got to go to the shop to see what's this freaking whining sound and I'm pretty sure it's my up pipe um, that's squealing because that's doing all the research you know that's what I found but I got to get that stuff squared away I'm pretty sure it just kind of broke with all these uh, situations I've been having um, you guys heard it probably talking about it before but anyway let me go ahead and get this fuel while since this truck is cooled down and uh, get to the business man Alright, this stuff right here is what I was telling you guys, telling you all about right now. This is that injected clean and cetane boost that I'm using now. This stuff is more expensive than the Hot Shot Secret. It does give you one more point of cetane boost. Um, so I'm going to run it like I'm just... This truck is being powered by Amsoil this, this time around if you haven't heard me say it before. But we're going to go ahead and uh, put this in. My truck pretty much takes a whole bottle every single fill up. Now that Amsoil all in one, it takes me two bottles every single fill up because it does have more stuff. So it takes two bottles every single fill up. It's mad expensive, but I'm happy it's not getting cold out. Um, I'm probably just going to run this regardless anyway um, because this does have... 80 gallons versus the 40 gallons of the all-in-one, you know, for the tank. Like I said, I end up having to use two bottles. So I'll take the price difference, you know, with the Hot Shot Secret and uh, just use the... In my opinion, this may be a higher quality product. So to me, I'm like, shoot, if I see it in stores, you know what I mean? That's something that you don't see. You don't see Arch Oil in stores. You don't see Ams Oil in stores. This is something that, especially for the 6.0, you know, it's very important to get, you know, the top quality stuff, top quality fuel, top quality oil, top quality fuel ladders, all that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get to this fill up. I just to show you guys what we're working with.
dropped off that cable reel this morning. A uh, quick little drop off and then on the way, like right as I was pulling up, I found another load um, that was picking up 50, well, 50 miles away from this one. And uh, it's gonna go on the trailer too, right when he the empty spot. Um, we're gonna take that on over to Kansas. Well, I think it's, I forgot where it's going, but basically it's only 200 some miles from here. And also the other load is about 200 some miles from here and not in the same direction, but I'm not like losing any money. So all in all, I'm probably running like I say probably like 1300 miles something like that in totality from the time I picked up that first load in Georgia leaving home all the way over here probably about 1300 miles and then with a total of let's say 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 so that's probably like $3,200 something like that with all the parcels that we've taken you know over here and uh shoot that's the way we're moving it man so it looks like I'm going into the week over here but they already pretty much knew I was gonna go and drop it off on Monday. I thought I was gonna be able to drop it off today. I'm not gonna be able to, so I might try to push it. We'll see, but with that bucket being on the back, I think it's like something like five getting over here. Um, I'm mess with my wind resistance. Sorry for the wind that you're hearing right now, but you already know out here in the Midwest, man, that wind is kind of crazy once you get towards Kansas, Nebraska, all that other stuff. So you really have to take that into consideration. I actually just got on the phone with a broker too earlier. I was trying to take this other load, but that freaking load, man, it was like eight feet tall. He was like, what's the problem? I'm like, what's the problem? The problem is the load is eight feet tall. I'm not, I don't really carry anything of six feet, six, six and higher, you know, if I don't have to. I'll grab a container if I'm in a bad spot, especially in this area, it could be Kansas. You know what I'm saying? I'll grab a container there. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm not in a bad spot, which I actually just had to do recently, you know, that was the first time I had to do it in probably like a year, year and a half, something like that. But unless I'm in a good spot, if I'm in a good spot or I can find something else, I'm definitely gonna avoid a super tall low with that wind resistance messing up my MPG, man. MPG is everything out here, miles of everything. And that's another thing I have to remember all the time um, is that it is not the days sometimes you gotta focus on. You really gotta focus on the miles, especially when it comes to these par these partials. Don't get caught up in the day, the day to day. And once you're making, you gotta call, get caught up in the miles. You know what I'm saying? Get as much miles in as you can with these lows, best rates, and drop them off as fast as you can. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get loaded with this one. Y'all take it. All right, fam. We all loaded. Yes, we got the big old box on the back of the rear end. But that is okay. It's not the best we placed. I probably should have moved it a little bit closer. However, it's only four, four and some change, thousand pounds. It's still the 1600 that I got on here. We should be all right. You know what I mean? Fish got to go. It was a strap and go. And so, uh, should we off with the business, man. But now I got a decision to make. Either... I drop this load off in Kansas first, or I drop this load off in Nebraska first. You don't know exactly which one I want to do yet. I'm going to check the load board and see which load, which, or look at both searches for today and see which side has the most loads coming up out of it. Because whichever one has the most loads, that's the route that I'm probably going to go. And that's the best way to, you know, run it when you kind of got two drops on Monday for each four hours apart, but they're equal distant, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, this pickup that I'm picking up right now. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Uh, Y'all stay tuned. Stay blessed. Please. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to drop that bucket off first and go to the Kansas location first since I am pretty much in the same, you know, kind of situation as far as the loads that I'm getting out of there. I'm not in necessarily a better spot. So I'm going to drop the bucket off first because it's going to give me my worst MPG. And, you know, like I said, the first partial that's still on the trailer from when I left Georgia, that's 1600 That's some flat. And it's 1,600 uh, uh, pounds. So I uh, think it'll be more worth my while to drop the bucket off first, get the weight off and get the height off, and then go drop the uh, this last little piece off on, you know, probably midday on Monday. It puts me in the same boat I was kind of in today, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll have, you know, a better situation where we can get to Nebraska and get something coming up out of there on Monday, you know, and call it a day. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get to my drive. And y'all stay tuned. Get to the weekend. Get to dropping this sauce for you guys. Uh, hot shot with me, y'all. Uh, y'all stay tuned. Stay Blessed piece. Man, I'm so happy I checked my paperwork, man, because I just realized that that front load I was telling y'all about, I was going to drop the back one off first on Monday since they both delivered on Monday. I realized the front one going to Tyson Foods. They're like 24 7. So I ended up calling the uh, contact. I actually did have a contact for that load. Um, so I ended up calling and uh, seeing what was the latest. They were open and it was 5 30. They said they shut the doors at 5 30 uh, today. So I'm uh, again, it's got me there at 4 46. Like as long as I keep the door closed, as the OG says, we um we gonna make it, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop these little bitties off. Unfortunately, I messed with my MPG. I did want to drop that bigger one off first, um, but it is what it is. It also time does matter as well. You know what I'm saying? Because if I, you can drop a load off the day before or that night or something like that, go ahead and get it off. That way, that's something else you don't have to do. You know what I'm saying?
know what I'm saying? That next day, and then you waste some time, you know, because uh, in, in this industry, shoot, time is actually money. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get to it, and shoot, continue this drive, man. Alright, just like that YouTube fam, we delivered that first partial I got back in. The news is there is a truck stop up the street and uh, we just rolling with this boy right now. The big boy in the back got me a little terrible MPG, but it's only about a four hour drive to the next drop on Monday. So I'm going to go up here to this pickup and I mean, I pick up a truck stop and then go ahead and get to the business, man. But anyway, y'all stay tuned, man. Have a good weekend. Get ready for the sauce I'm about to drop for you guys next week. Well, actually, this weekend, and then on top of that, the video we dropping next weekend. But anyway, hot shot with me, y'all, man.